Hey there, fellows. Okay, so this lotto we're using as a guinea pig is still alive and kicking. We were able to get the engine to turn over on compressed air. Though the plenum we used, the volume in that plenum had to be in the 80 liter range, which really isn't that much, enough for the motor to run for maybe five to six seconds. However, it'd be cool if we could drive around just a bit. How can we create some pressure? We gave it some thought, and the easiest way to go about it would be using steam. In order to make a steam engine, we'll need to make a boiler, which will give us the right amount of steam. And we're talking some serious volume here. Let's try firing it up on steam. I mean, we really want to head out for a drive and see how the car gets around. How much range can it achieve? What's needed to make it all happen? We'll be learning everything by means of experimenting. Right, let's do this. Here's what we've got. We've got two cylinders right here and a bunch of pipes. What we need to do now is weld up a furnace where we'll be burning our fuel. As for these two cylinders, we'll use them. I meant to say that we'll be making them into some sort of a boiler which will produce a good amount of steam for us. This means generating plenty of pressure. In any case, we're going to have to put something together. Let's just go ahead and make ourselves a boiler. Time to get started. Steam engine. First startup. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's where we're at. The thing is that we had an argument with the guys on how we get the job done as best as possible after looking into how you make a stove. In the end, we wound up with this gigantic thing. I'm clueless as to how much fire would we stuff into it, but I reckon we can get 25 liters of charcoal in there with no trouble at all. The other concern is obviously increasing efficiency of the steam generator so that it produces tons of steam. Anyways, so that concoction of ours made from those cylinders will also act as sort of a chimney. We'll be placing the entire assembly on top of this, while combustion will be occurring underneath. But here's the thing. We were looking into constructing a three-way or five-way stove, but this is starting to look more like a two- or one-way. I still don't quite know. Anyway, combustion will be occurring underneath, and we expect for the smoke to exit through the piping, which should get the water even hotter. So that's our solution for increasing efficiency. However, we need to throw it together and get it working to figure everything out. How do we measure how much steam this generates? We'll open the valve. Well, that kind of goes without saying. That's when we find out. We need to figure out how long we can get it to work. There's a lot to do here. Hopefully we can get somewhere with this. 
That's the major concern we're dealing with here. How it's all going to burn, boil, bubble and whatever. I say we have a look. So right now we're checking for any leakage by pressurizing it from the inside. Wouldn't want to find any holes in this thing. Okay, I can already see some bubbles. Right, I see the problem. Oh wow, and that's just the beginning of the story. So here's why we're going to all of this trouble. It's pretty much inevitable that we'll have to touch up the welding. We could have done it right from the very beginning, but when you start with a MIG and then switch to a TIG, this is what you end up with. You'll probably miss a spot. That's totally normal. Okay, so after getting everything prepared, we brought the entire assembly outside. I mean, our shed isn't the right place to try it out. It is a bit, you know, when you're constantly at it. Anyway, we are ready for action. And all is good. We've connected it to the motor. Here we have some charcoal. And right there we have a sort of... It's one of those exhaust fan deals for extracting smoke, but we're just gonna call it an air feeder device. Now it's a matter of filling the reservoir with some water, loading in some firewood. We've installed a manometer to keep track of internal pressure. If it gets too high, we'll let a bit out. You just have to open the valve and try not to scald your hands in the process. I'm super keen to see how this all works. Let's do this.
An unsettling tone lingers in the air. The sound makes the horses shriek in fear. From above, piercing thunder roars. The earth has visitors. This is the sound. Okay, so we've got some pressure going in there. It's not quite what we were looking to achieve, but it's something. Right, we doing this? Wait a minute, I thought this engine was powered by steam, not by water. There was a bit of condensation in there. I mean, the pipe was a bit cold since we've got some chilly weather outside. You're saying we need a pipe heater? We absolutely need to get a pipe heater going. Otherwise, this motor is indeed going to be fed water. Let's try that again. Put that away. Look at that, the engine is rotating. Look at it go. It actually works, look at that. Wait, the oil. We should put the rocker cover back on. There's some steam coming from the exhaust pipe. You see that? It actually works. We've got a working steam engine, guys. Not bad. We've got water pouring from the muffler, and we're losing pressure. Apparently two was enough to get the engine spinning. Right, so at this point, we got the pressure up to about two atmospheres, and we got the engine to run. Oh my god, what happened to the motor oil? It did sustain a steady 1000 RPM, plus the engine was completely silent. Steam from the exhaust pipe. I'd say we've got zero carbon emissions here. Awesome stuff. Let me check the pressure. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. Maybe a bit more, no? We will need to burn some more coal, though. I don't see the problem in that. Looks like we're on the road to success. I'm feeling pretty good about this. It's working! I can actually use this as a throttle. You can't see anything back there. We're getting somewhere. Oh my god. I don't know, it looks like it's seized up. Let me just... Okay, looks like we're done here. That gear just fell off the crankshaft. Now, why wasn't it tightened down? Well, we thought we'd give it a try and it wouldn't work. Come again? We thought the car wouldn't run on steam. As if it had any other options. Well, that's what we thought. Why on earth would you even think that? Okay, fellas, here's the situation. The fact of the matter is that this here steam generator actually works. You saw for yourselves how fast the engine was rotating. I reckon it can at least get up to one and a half to 2,000 revs. Why is this the case? Well, when we fed it with compressed air via that small plenum, air is obviously not as dense as steam. Plus we factor in the temperature and everything else. What matters is the engine nicely rotates. 
And when you adjust the steam coming through that valve, the revs go up and down accordingly. It all depends on the volume from where the steam is coming from. Another key factor is pressure, of course. Given that steam is denser, we don't need to accumulate as much pressure to go up to eight or nine atmospheres like you would with the compressed air. Here all you really need is about 3.5 to 4 atmospheres, and the engine will happily start spinning at quite a rapid pace. Anyway, fellas, next episode we integrate this steam generator into the car somehow, hook everything up. I mean, you probably noticed that there are plenty of things we need to fix here, and after that, yep. We'll head out and go for a drive. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything. Give us a big thumbs up. Send in those comments and suggestions. Alright, catch you later.